Hello and welcome to WePC Benchmarks. Today we are taking a look at the performance of the newest just released CPU from Intel in the i9-12900K and comparing it to its second previous generation of the i9-10900K. They do run at pretty similar stock frequencies with the turbos up to 5.3 GHz for the 10th gen but only 5.2 GHz for the 12th but with the 12th gen also having 16 cores, 24 threads split into its 8 and 8 big and little cores whereas the 10th only has 10 cores, 20 threads. We're expected to see some performance differences here. With the introduction of their new performance and efficiency cores you can expect a better performance especially in Windows 11 which we did do our tests on. Intel and Microsoft worked together to make the new architecture work best with smaller tasks working on the efficiency Cores and performance cores working on the big important tasks, meaning that background tasks shouldn't affect your game performance anymore, or that you can run other stuff while gaming. For the 12th gen CPU, we did monitor the cores separately on our overlay, so we should be able to see how they work during gaming. We also only did 1440p and 4K, as with a 3090 and all games at max settings, we wanted no real graphic bottleneck and see what a difference the CPU may have. So we start off with Control, and at 1440p and Ultra, the 10900K averages 131fps, for 1% of 108 and 0.1% of 97. Then the 12900K averaging 129fps, for 1% of 106 and 0.1% of 100. Then at 4K, the 10th gen averages 69 FPS with 1% of 59 and 0.1% of 31. And the 12th gen averages 69 FPS for 1% of 58 and 0.1% of 28. On to CSGO. And at 4040p, the 10th gen averages 258 FPS for 1% of 76 and 0.1% of 30. And 12th gen averages 355 FPS for 1% of 122 and 0.1% of 39. Up to 4K, and the 10th gen averages 263 FPS for 1% of 89 and 0.1% of 11, with the 12th gen averaging 320 FPS for 1% of 148 and 0.1% of 51, with again a good boost from better GPU utilisation but lower CPU utilisation. Next up is Cyberpunk, and the 10th gen is averaging 103 FPS for 1% of 83 and 0.1% of 79, then the 12th gen averages 99 FPS for 1% of 84 and 0.1% of 80, up to 4K, and the 10th gen averages 70 FPS for 1% of 43 and 0.1% of 11, with the 12th gen averaging 69 FPS for 1% of 58 and 0.1% of 14. We move on to Days Gone, and at 1440p, the 10th gen is averaging 149 FPS with 1% of 66 and 0.1% of 43. And then the 12th gen is averaging 142 FPS with 1% of 87 and 0.1% of 59. Moving up to 4K, and the 10th gen is averaging 91 FPS with 1% of 61 and 0.1% of 50. And then the 12th gen is averaging 84 FPS with 1% of 64 and 0.1% of 43. Onto Gas Station Simulator, and at 4040p, the 10th gen is averaging 112 FPS with 1% of 70 and 0.1% of 41, with the 12th gen averaging 125 FPS for 1% of 82 and 0.1% of 35, up to 4K, and the 10th gen is averaging 79 FPS for 1% of 52 and 0.1% of 31, and then the 12th gen is averaging 75 FPS for 1% of 56 and 0.1% of 29. We have New World next, and at 4040p, the 10th gen is averaging 108 FPS for 1% of 56 and 0.1% of 16, and the 12th gen is averaging 125 FPS for 1% of 72 and 0.1% of 57, up to 4K, and the 10th gen is averaging 106 FPS for 1% of 54 and 0.1% of 19. With the 12th gen averaging 126 FPS for 1% of 80 and 0.1% of 67. Lastly, we compared the performance of the CPUs in a couple of synthetics or workstation applications, such as the BMW Blender Render Benchmark. There is quite a significant difference here, with the 10th gen lasting 2 minutes 22, whereas the 12th gen only takes 1 minute 33. A big performance boost in the newest generation in rendering. We also have Cinebench R23. And on single core, the 10th gen scores 1233, and the 12th gen scores 1949, so again quite a significant score difference. And the improvement is much better in the multi core, with the 10th gen scoring 15169, and the 12th gen scores 25777. So quite the improvement on multi-core, with over 10,000 points over 10th gen. So there you have it, a selection of benchmarks for the 10900K and the all new 12900K. There is a $100 difference from MSRP between the two, with the 10th gen costing $500, but the 12th gen $600. Not cheap at all, so you would expect a big performance increase, and it looks like it has it. Not so much in most GPU games, but in CPU dependent one is big, such as in CSGO where it's over 100 FPS more on average, and similarly, 
a new world where it can get over 20 more FPS on average, where the others are stuck near 100. And then the workstation performance is very impressive. With taking off nearly a minute off a render and improving its Cinebench scores so much, it is a great deal. And then with its architecture, you can expect some improvement in resource management. When multitasking, which is becoming bigger nowadays, you can expect less stuttering and performances by doing stuff on your other monitor while gaming. Finally, Intel has brought it to AMD. And we can't wait to see what Team Red brings out in response to this. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.